Today I'm going to show you how to make this awesome looking gaming channel templates inspired by the game Control. Also, I'm giving away these templates and more for free, so make sure you stick until the end of the video to find out how to download them. Now grab your snack, get comfortable, and let's get cracking. So the first project we're going to dissect is this lower third right here. So those of you who played Control will recognize uh, Polaris here. We've got some rocks drifting from left to right coming in, drifting slowly and then collapsing back out. We get the text decoding itself and then going back out of it as well. And then we get the secondary text, which is more like a cryptic thing, very reminiscent of the game. First thing we're going to do is make a rectangle. Press Q on your keyboard to select the rectangle tool. Click and drag until you get something similar to this. Toggle down the option, go to content, rectangle one. We're going to delete the fill one, click on the little arrow and add a gradient fill. I've got this reference shot right here. So I'm gonna make this gradient sampling two colors from here. Let's toggle that open. Go to edit gradient and select the first color. Make it somewhere around this cool purple here. Go to the second one and sample the bright red here. Press okay. Now let's play around with the start and end points to make it somewhat symmetric. Oh, that should do. In the template you saw, I've made the left hand side disappear into a transparent layer. So this is how to do it. And just move the purple here, click here to create a new color and here to create a new opacity. The color here won't matter, but this is where you can uh, control the opacity. So you go from 100 to zero and you can see the preview here. It disappears. Now let's readjust that start point and play around with the setting until you're happy with it. Somewhere around here should do the trick. And if we toggle the transparency grid, you can see it's disappearing here. Now let's create a new solid, call it rectangle mask. Press G on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool and draw a mask that will be used to hide the right side of the banner. Let's feather it a lot. Make sure the shape layer is below and set the track mat to alpha inverted. This technique here will give us flexibility later on when we adjust the size of the rectangle to the size of the name and the text layer. I know we could set up some expressions to do this automatically and readjust the size of the rectangle depending on the size of the text, but I thought let's just do a quick and dirty technique here. Select the shape layer and the mask layer and pre-compose them. Let's call it rectangle. I've got this asphalt picture, which I'm going to use to give some texture to this rectangle. Drag that on top. We can adjust the size and position to make sure that it covers the rectangle properly. Somewhere around here should do. Add a texturize effect to the rectangle and set the texture layer to grid, to the asphalt one. We can solo that. And here we go. Let's change the light direction to coming from the top and adjust the contrast just to make it appear a tiny bit. It doesn't have to be crazy like that. Now let's add the first text layer, which should be used for your name. Choose a nice bold font to mimic the game's look. So something like Montserrat Bold looks good here. Make sure it's aligning to the left and place it right here. To go down the text option, go to text and click on the animate arrow and select character value. Set the character alignment to center, the range to full Unicode and the character value to 31. Toggle down the range selector one options, place a keyframe on the offset by clicking on the stopwatch icon. Let's make the value 0% and move forward say 10 frames and set the new value to 100%. And boom, just like that, you get your decoding text. Well done you. I've made the composition about four seconds, so now let's copy and paste those two keyframes to the end and just swap them around. So now you get the animation coming in and decoding out. Easy. Now repeat this process with the second line of text. Duplicate the layer, place it below, change the font to Arial Black, and now let's write something mysterious to uh, match the tone of control. Now that we get the two text layers in place, we can readjust the size of the rectangle underneath. Just move the width, just like that, and the position. Now let's add the rocks. I've already made transparent PNGs of the rocks we're going to use here. They will all be included in the project files once you download them. Let's place them in the composition as we please and leave the big one somewhere at the end. Straight away, let's make some color adjustments to blend the colors together and match the dark tones of the game. Add an adjustment layer, place it above all the rocks, add a tint effect to make all the rocks black and white, add a brightness and contrast effect, crank up the contrast a lot, add a curves effect and push the dark blues and dark greens up, and finally, let's squash some of the lower mid-tones a little bit. Now with a few keyframes, let's animate the rocks to come in from the left, in screen, drift a little bit to the right until say like 10 frames to the end, and then disappear back to the left. You should end up with something looking like this. 
coming in, drifting a little bit, and disappearing again. So that's the main bit done, let's now move on to Polaris. Now it took me a few hours to work out the best way to create a convincing Polaris, only using the built-in effects inside of After Effects. So I think I got pretty close, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's pretty daunting, but uh, here are the main points, I think you might still learn some pretty cool stuff. Make a blade using the shape layer, use the repeater with 16 instances at a 22.5 degree angle to make a full circle. Now animate the blade to rotate a little bit on its anchor point, and you should get this. Duplicate the layer and add a wave world effect. Change the view to height map, add a basic fractal noise and a levels effect to make it contrasting. Make sure you set up the fractal noise render mode to multiply, and you should end up with something looking like this. Pretty weird, right? Make sure those waves are on top of the shape layer and set the track map of the latter to luma mat. You can offset the wave world to make it appear a bit better, and here we go. It's probably hard to see right now, but it's kind of the base of the effect. Now duplicate these two layers a bunch of times, offset the sizes, the rotations, and you should end up with something looking like this. So that's for the lower third. Now let's take a look at the end screen. So I've made a simple wall texture using two grunge layers with a multiply blending mode, a shape layer with two upside down triangles and some more grunge. Let's put this wall texture into a pre-composition, create a new solid and add a shutter effect. In the texture dropdown, set the front mode to layer and select the wall texture. You can play around with the force field, the gravity and the physics and everything, but since we're only going to use one freeze frame of the animation, it doesn't really matter much. In the shape drop-down menu, you can change the pattern to glass to make it more fractured and random in terms of shape and set the repetition to a much higher number. Obviously, the more repetitions you add, the more your computer will struggle, so that's down to you to manage that. For the lighting, this effect is a bit more limited. You can't use more than one light source at a time, so I've set the render to layer only and created a simple point light with the camera. Set the camera system to comp camera and the lighting to first comp light. Then I've duplicated this layer and set the render to pieces. In this one I've made the light type a point source, made it a bright red and moved it to the far right. I pushed it back a bit as well to get some edge light and give it some creepy looking atmosphere. Then I pre-combed the two shutter layers, the light and the camera together. Make sure you add a freeze frame as well. Then I animated a few instances of fractal noise. I'll leave those things on screen right now for you to check out. That's the first one, make sure you add some uh, Color Vibrance, which is a free plugin by Video Copilot. And the second one, which is more vivid, still the same color, but also has an Add Blending Mode. So the two together will give you this. After I've added a PNG of the main character, JC Faden, I've decided to give it some fake camera movement and distortion. For this, you can add an adjustment layer and place it on top of everything. Add a displacement map, set both the horizontal and vertical to zero. Hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch for the horizontal displacement and write this expression. This expression is very simple, it just means that the value for the horizontal displacement only changes once per second by a value of up to 7 pixels. What you can do in the displacement map effect is to change what the effect is using to create a distortion. So you have the RGB channels, you have the alpha channels, and I quite like the lightness channel because it created some distortion whenever it was going on both ends of the expressions. You can kind of see it on Jesse's face here, there's some distortion, some parallax, I think it's pretty pretty cool. Look at her hand shifting and being all weird. I think it's pretty cool. So once you're done and happy with it, you can play around with the settings of course, you can add alerts, you can add your text, you can add maybe some squares for your upcoming videos if you want, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. I think as it is, it's pretty cool. Also, if you haven't played the game, what are you doing? Obviously, keep learning stuff during the lockdown, make sure you sharpen your skills and learn new stuff. This channel is perfect for that. But if you have some downtime, which you need to have every now and then, you need to wind down and everything, uh, definitely check out Control. It's just one of my favorite games of the year. There you go, I've said it. Although I'm a fan of the more classic stuff, this one is definitely worth checking out. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen me talk about some new exciting announcements. I have now launched my new community website with Links to all my tutorials, of course. Brand new core merch with core t-shirts, hoodies, joggers, and even more coming in the next few weeks. Brand new Lightroom presets. So if you do follow me on Instagram and you like my pictures, definitely check those out. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do right now. 
a new community forum where I can keep you updated with of course new videos just like this one, but also giveaways, competition, polls and even more. Basically I want this community forum to become a hub for people just like you and I to learn new tips and tricks, but also discuss ideas and anything relating to video editing, picture editing, visual effects, anything like that. And finally, this new website will be the host of a new exclusive members area. Think of it as a VIP only area where you get tons of perks from me. That includes one week early access on all my videos, huge and unlimited discount on all my merch and presets, dips on all future limited editions, voting power on tutorial requests, and even more. So if you want to support this channel, my work, and help me grow this amazing community, definitely consider becoming an exclusive member today. So that's for the news, which I'm very excited about. Now if you want to download some free After Effects templates, I've got you covered. To download this control-inspired template, all you have to do is follow the first link in the description below and join the community forum. It's completely free, I'll automatically send you the download link, and also you'll get instant access to the community discussions. Nice. Also, if you're interested in getting even more high-quality, free After Effects templates, just like this one, I've teamed up with my fellow designer, Digital Products 669 on VideoHive. He made a ton of amazing templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and even more with my favorite one being, you guessed it, his gamer channel essentials. We're giving away not one, not two, but three gamers essential to the first three of you guys to join my community forum. All you have to do to enter the competition is to follow the first link in the description, like I said earlier. You will get the control templates and all the ones you've just seen appear on screen right now, all for free. So be quick because only three of you will win these templates. And if you don't win, don't worry, you will still automatically get the control templates. If you'd like to get your hands on all the other templates, make sure to check out my buddy Digital Products 669 on VideoHive or click on the second link in the video description. All his templates are super high quality, easy to customize with your own name, your logo and your channel branding, and they work natively in the software of choice. There are versions for Adobe Creative Cloud, but also for all the versions of Adobe software and even 4K resolutions. What's not to like? Good luck to everyone and hurry to make sure you get your hands on some amazing free After Effects templates. So there you have it guys, this is how to create your own custom gaming channel templates in After Effects. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you did my accent, make sure to give it a like, get subscribed and consider joining the community forum. Also, if you'd like to support my work and this growing channel, you can check out my brand new merch and presets. Finally, if you're wondering what to watch next, I recommend you to watch this video right here. Thanks again for watching, my name is Francois, see you in the next video.